You're listening to Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics from every angle. Here's Richard Kearney and Ryan Foley. I got to find last week's make who was. I was trying to keep track of our picks here. Oh, I'll God. post that next week if we don't get it this week. Uh, uh, because they were horrible. Uh, horrible. We were only uh, your picks were horrible. I was pretty much <laughs> on point, but that's a you know we don't we don't have to go into the particulars. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure you went with Denver as well. We were only div- divided by one game. I did. I did pick Denver. I did pick Denver. And they should the, have won. It was that the game. Charger game that we were off on, and you went with the Chargers. I went with my Raiders, and we came did within five pick, points of making it work. You picked the Patriots. Did I? I should yep. have picked the Dolphins because. No, I got us both picking the Patriots. I double check marked it. Wow, I wonder why I did that. And then uh, that's some Belichick shit right there. Because I you picked Tampa, you picked Tampa Bay. I picked Dallas. So no, I take it back. You did, you did out, you did out W by two games. Yeah, but it wasn't the one that counted. I take them all no. back if my Raiders could have won, but I'm okay with it because there's only three teams in the AFC that the odds makers are picking to win it all: Bills, Chiefs, or Chargers. So if it's one of those three that we lose to, I'm good with that. And to only lose by five with a chance to win it in the end, I'm good with that. I don't believe in moral victories at all. I don't like the fact that we lost, but week one and we hadn't played our starters at all in the uh, in the preseason. You know, I'll take it. Now, if we get to zero and three, then there's a problem. Who are y'all play this week? Arizona. Yeah, y'all better beat them. It's our home are- opener, so I'm pretty sure we might be hyped. They are terrible. Yes, they are. Uh, after them, we got the Titans, and the Giants handled them last week. You shut down Derrick Henry, and you I got I wouldn't that. say handled. It yeah. took a last-minute yeah. touchdown and a two-point conversion to You're beat right. them. But You're right. They did win. They thought for a second they had Eli under center, so you know. Are we recording? Like, has we already started the show? Yeah, so allow me to tell everybody, hey, welcome to Slightly Warped. <laughs> <laughs> Just curious, because hey, I didn't you know. want to like I didn't want to like give up some good nuggets that I had here if we weren't just recording yet. We are recording. Give give those nuggets up. Well, <clears throat> I'm just gonna go ahead and get this out the way. I'm gonna do this every week. The car, Lamar Jackson. Oh, I'm gonna take it on the chin here for this week. Um, you know, actually, actually, percentage wise, my man Carr beat Jackson by three percent. But Lamar got Carr the dub. had exactly Carr had fifty nine percent passing. Jackson had fifty six. Uh, the the car threw three picks. That's what really killed him. Yeah, I mean, you got Khalil Jackson Mack on one side, and you got uh, the other guy on the other side. I mean, what's his name, Bosa? Yeah, I'm mm. pretty sure that they're going to rattle you. So, I don't see that happening every week to every team. And you know, I'm just going to bring this up. You know who had a statistically similar game to Derek Carr? Who's that? Baker Mayfield. Um. <laughs> Um, now, you know, I keep saying that, uh, he's more like Matt Stafford, who also statistically had a similar game. No, I'm thinking, well, I I didn't pull his stats, so I, I had to, I had to take your word on that. He was picked a couple times and sacked a couple times too, so. Oh, yeah, no, I'm just talking about percentage-wise, passing percentage. They were Mm -hmm. both at 59%. They both lost. Yeah. And what else they have in common, they both came on at the end of the game. You know, yeah, if they do that stuff at the beginning, yeah. Um, Empty I, I, calories. And I, I can't even say this team is not built to come from behind anymore because now they can. They just need to apply themselves. Um, you know, it I is what it pain. is. 
I, you know. I feel your pain, man. I've been there. I've been there. So I'm just uh, giddy am, that, that that we have a you know a state of the art offensive system and you know uh, an alien at a quarterback. So I, I don't know. According it. to Skip Bayless, y'all only scored 44 points. You could have had 60 if you had kept Tyreek Hill. Exactly. <laughs> you know, but Skip, there's no there's no pleasing Skip. He'd rather no. have Dak Prescott over over Patrick Mahomes. So yeah, how how did Dak's game go? Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, I actually it, want to go back to the last week where we discussed, and you had said that this is the beginning of the end of the Mike McCarthy era, mm-hmm. or Mike McCarthy era. I'm, I'm, I was hesitant to agree with you last week, but I think I'm going to go ahead and agree with you. Well, I mean, I, if you think, think about, it, if just, you just look at it, it in its purest form, if you look at it in his purest form, there's a reason why he's not in Dallas anymore. There's a you reason. Mean Green Bay. Yeah, Green Bay. Uh, there's a reason why he's not in Green Bay anymore. Um, the play calling is just absolutely horrific. Um, and you got those kind of receivers. First of all, they should have never gave away Mari Cooper. That was a safety valve for Dak right there. Yeah, he needs somebody else besides uh, C.D. Lamb. Mm-hmm. And, and and I knew that was going to happen simply because we gave away Amari Cooper when we sent him to Dallas, and we had to go through a couple lean years. Mm-hmm. I mean, if we didn't have Darren Waller and Hunt, and uh, I almost said Hunter Henry, um, um, we 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 would have still sucked. So, I and I sign off completely on that L. You are what you are. I believe that was your saying last uh, week. And yes. we own one and we played like it was own one, you know, you can't play good in the second half after you lay a turd in the first and expect to come out on top. Yeah. What little, and I don't know if you, your video's frozen on my end. Oh, wow. I'm moving my mic and I'm still frozen. What's going on here? Um, But <clears throat> from what I seen of the Raider charger game, it seemed like Carr was trying to force feed Adams. Yes, and they did address that because it seemed like that to us too. He wanted to play with his shiny new toy. Yeah, and like that one, I think it was his first touchdown pass to Bolden, the the running back. That was a pretty pass. Like that was a dime. He dropped that right in the bucket. Um, but you know, and him and Devontae started, you know getting on the same page towards the end of the game. But, man, I, I see if a defense can take Adams out of out of that, out of his target range, he's going to have a hard time, especially your O-line, man. I, maybe it's just the Chargers and having Mack and Bosa as the attackers. I don't know. It, it, it was. I mean, but, okay, there we are. Yes, the recording should still be in progress. Now we're back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I guess we'll see how our O line holds up on Thursday. But I will say this, and we'll do some game predictions in a minute. If y'all put forty four points on the board again, the Chargers, and, and I'm not, I'm not trying to sound bitter because we lost to them. I'm just tired of hearing everybody talk about how good the Chargers are when they haven't done anything. If you want to say the Chiefs are the darlings of the AFC, if you want to say the Chiefs are the team to beat, they've proven it. They've absolutely proven it. If you want to say the Bills are the team to beat, they kind of proved it too until those last 13 seconds of last year. I'll give them that. But are you going to tell me a team that didn't make the playoffs is is – the best in the AFC? Why? Why would you say even even after they beat us on Sunday? Oh, great. They got revenge against last year. We'll see you again this year. Not a problem, bro. Yeah, and I think it'll be a different game when they're in Vegas. Um, like I said, I'm pretty sure I, I picked both teams to, to win their home game. So yeah, you did. You, guys, you guys splitting. So I am the Chargers always look good on paper. Yes. Always. The ultimate paper champions. 
And there is no way, I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and say this, the Chiefs are not going to hang 44 on the chart. Now, they might, but the Chargers are going to hang 42 on Kansas City, if that's that type of game. It's not going to be mm. a 44 to 21. The Chargers and the Chiefs historically play close games. Historically. And they historically split. Uh, even back into the Marty Schottenheimer era. I mean, it was, it always, for some reason, always play each other close. I, so think I, what, think, I think what Kansas City has going for them this weekend is it's the home opener at Arrowhead. I, and it's I a mean, Thursday we, night game. But we had that last year. No, we didn't. We opened up against the Browns. You're right. Because we played the Chargers in the third game of the year. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm picking us to win, obviously, but. You know, I think it'll be a 34 to 28 type of game. I could see that. I, could I would love see to that. see our defense put the clampers on him. I would love to see. I that. would love to see our defense hurt him, take him out for uh, a few games. That way, you know. Now, I don't want, I don't wish injuries on nobody, but uh, part of football, I definitely, uh, I, it's different. I don't <laughs> wish if it happens, it happens. I'm not wishing it upon him, is what I'm saying. You know, like, I didn't like I don't like to see Dak hurt because that makes the Cowboys they were already hard to watch to begin with. Now they're gonna be horrendous to watch, uh, you know. Going full circle, you go back to my my words from last week, and I will back it up this week. By the end of this year, Mike McCarthy will not be there. Yeah. I don't mean I, week 17, week 18. I mean it could be week 14 or 15 when he's already I out. Don't I don't think so now because Dak's hurt. If Dak was in the lineup and they still played like crap, I could mm -hmm. see that. But I, I bet you Jerry Jones will give him, regardless of what happens, till the end of the year because he has a built-in excuse. Come on, Jerry. I didn't have my starting quarterback for six weeks. You know, so I think I don't think Jerry would do that. Now, replacing him at the end of the year, you know, like right after week 18 and they're not in the playoffs and got to go, got to go. I could see that happening. And hiring the old Saints coach, Sean Payton. That's my that. prediction. That's my prediction right there. That's a good prediction. I can't argue against that because that would be a damn good move. <clears throat> and that's the other thing I was going to say. If you let him go, you better have somebody good to replace him with. And that's about oh, as yeah. good as it gets. Because he's just waiting for the perfect opportunity. And I think know, I said it last year. Uh, when the Raiders finished the season, I'm like, they played really good for this interim coach. If you replace him, you better replace him with somebody good. So, yeah, they went out and said, all right, we'll give you the six-time Super Bowl winner offensive coordinator for the Patriots. Okay. But do you also I'm, – now, I'm not trying to throw any more shade at the Raiders because – Sure you are. Loss, it's in your nature. Like, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm really not. It's, a loss is a loss, and I'm not trying to pile on. But – I will say that coach McDaniels, the way he called that game from what little bit I saw was just as bad as when he was the Denver coach. Yeah. I, I didn't uh, see I saw a his whole press, lot change. I saw his press conference and it, it, it came up not about Denver, but about the play calling itself. And he did admit the play calling has to get better. He tried to force feed Devontae Adams the ball a little bit too much, and he knows that he's got to send it to Hunter Renfro and Darren Waller and start splitting it equally. That's not his decision, though. It's ultimately the quarterback's decision to who he's going to throw the ball to. Yeah, it is. Now, granted, the plays are designed as he's the number one look. I get that. But there's plays designed like Mahomes playing this week. He was off of his number one and onto his two, three, and four plenty of times in that game. And that's what Carr needs to do, spread it around. The reason why I right. say it falls on the um, head coach, he's got he's got to be in Derek's ear and say, look, I know y'all college buddies and everything, but, bro, you got three, four other receivers out there. Go on ahead and give it to them. You know? And I agree with I agree with that. And he's going to say that, and I know he's going to do that. But if Carr doesn't do it, McDaniels is always going to take that heat on himself. Yeah. You know, it starts with me. I'm the head coach. Da, 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 da. It's the, it's the you know, normal PC verbiage that all coaches say. And, and I agree with that. And I'll say one more thing about Derek Carr because I saw his press conference too. 
he's that typical quarterback too that will take all the heat even for the ones that weren't his fault it it falls on me that's that's what he usually says most I need him like that I need him to have more of an attitude unless you're Aaron Rodgers yeah and then in that case it's everybody <laughs> he else blames fault. everybody right yeah. but I need him to have more of an attitude don't be afraid you know, to get in somebody's face when me and Kaz, when we coached football, uh, he was the defensive guy. I was always the offensive guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just you – know, if I had – if I was the offensive coordinator or the head coach of the Raiders, I would go back to force-feeding the rock to the running backs, work on the tight end, play action. You know, that's how I would play that game versus yeah. spreading them out ducking it to 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 Adams because you keep you know it's gonna be what it's gonna be it happened to the Chiefs last year where everybody's playing that cover two shell and you gotta run a defense out out of that shell and if you begin running those safeties will never stay up there because they're always going to be thinking about the run first. But it also depends on how you play the spread because Kansas City played a little bit of spread and if you well, think about play it, majority spread, but I'm I'm going by last year where everybody said they were figured out, and for majority they were, you know they uh, you ask, know, Mahomes was Buffalo lighting it up. That feels right. Well, that was also a bad defensive coaching in even special teams wise. I mean, I could pick that last minute apart where where if I was the coach of the Bills, we would have won. But you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Right, right. <laughs> but you know, last you know, 2018, you know, Mahomes, he nobody had an answer for Mahomes in 18. Nobody, no team at all had an answer for him, except for Bill Belichick. The 19 came. We were still, you know, the cream of the crop. We got we got to the Super Bowl, won it. Next year we were cocky. Ran through the league. I think it helped us that there were no state stands or people in the stands because mm-hmm. that was the COVID year. Yeah. And, you know, the check with me, you know, you don't have to deal with all that crowd noise. Went to the Super Bowl, lost Tampa Bay bad, no offensive line. Last year, it's like all of a sudden all the defenses caught up with us because we were doing the same thing. And most of those games, they took Tyreek away. Now he had his; he still had one hell of a year. He had a hundred and some odd catches and eleven hundred yards. I think he had ten touchdowns or mm-hmm. something like that. So he still had one hell of a year. But I agree. For the most part, we could not run the rock last year to save our life, or we refused to. This year, we're we're forced to be more balanced, and that's I think that's why. Just going off this from the preseason into the regular season, watching all the games and then the one against Arizona, we are going to be a force. We put we put the whole NFL on notice with the exception of Buffalo because Buffalo was already on notice. Like, I can't wait to play Cincinnati. I can't wait. Are they on your schedule? Oh, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Oh yeah, I cannot wait. And I think and, it's and and that's the thing. Ins- it if you uh, did you get a chance to watch Cincinnati's game against Pittsburgh? Man, yes, that was the most Pittsburgh boring- abused them. They did over and over and over again. Granted, Cincinnati had a chance to win it, didn't, but they got they got exposed. I don't know if that's Super Bowl hangover. We'll see in week two, three, four. If they're still playing bad. Yeah, it's week 13 is when we play Cincinnati, and it's back in Cincinnati. I cannot wait for that game. That's the best place to beat them on their home field since they beat you on yours. Well, they beat us on theirs last year, too. It's all good. You'll you'll get back at them. I'm kind of – I mean, we get through this Chargers game, and then we're we're at the Colts and at the Bucks and home against the Raiders, so – all you have to do is look and Those see what are we all did. Dubs if... Look at the film from last week of what we did to the Chargers in the second half. Once we got them figured out, they couldn't score again. That's the only reason why we caught up. Mm-hmm. 
the problem the, the problem that teams are going to have with Kansas City is keeping up with us offensively. You know, you're going to have to go just like Buffalo did in the divisional game, point for point. Yeah. Tit for tat. And there's not a whole lot of teams built like that. Mm-mm. Yeah. The Raiders could not. be if they utilize their play calling right. Yeah. Who's your they second wide receiver? That. Who's your secondary wide receiver? Hunter Renfro. Who's your third? Um, He was on your team last year. Um, God, what is his name? So not Hardman, because nah, Hardman's still there. They they dropped Rob, uh, Robert Robert uh, Demarcus Robinson. Oh, they cut him. All right, you're going to force me to look at the depth chart here, then, because I'm going to have to see because I'm just used to the starters. So my question is like, okay, Devontae Adams versus any one of our wide receivers, who's better? Adams. Okay. So y'all have Hunter Renfro and then Mac Hollins. Yeah, Mac Hollins. DJ Turner and Tyron Johnson. Yeah. So Hollins is good. I don't know about the other two guys. Hunter Renfro. Yeah. Is he better than anybody we have on our, our team? Um or he's, he's not to. he's he's not better than Valdez Scandling, but the other guy, who's the other guy y'all picked up? Um, Juju. Yeah, I think he's better than Juju. Hunter can run a better route. Juju's probably faster, but fast doesn't mean anything if you're not um elite speed. I think he's got just sub elite speed. Not bad, but there's a reason why Pittsburgh went with uh the younger guy and let Juju go. Um well Juju was never good at being the number one. And, and that's where he could be most dangerous. He's that no. sneaky. No. no. Not he not as a number one. As a number yeah, two. Yeah, number two in slot because he had Antonio Brown on the other side of him yeah. when he was doing his thing. Mm -hmm. And you know, let's be honest, Kelsey is our number one. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Which, by the uh, way, if you go tight end for tight end, y'all still got the edge there. That's a I wash. Mean, I, I would even I would consider it a wash with Kelsey having more more success because he's been in the league longer. Yeah. Now, if McDaniel's uses him right, like he used Gronk, oh my God, Waller would be a beast then. Because I would say he's faster than Gronk, probably not stronger, definitely not bigger, but. We could use that speed on those linebackers. What about up here? What about up here? And that's, that's where what, Kelsey. That's where Kelsey gets everybody. Yeah, because Kelsey knows what his quarterback's going through, and he knows, hey, that ball hasn't come out in X amount of time. He's in trouble. Let me get to this spot. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a that's that football mind, and you need more like that. Um, we have that in Adams, but that's further down the field and harder to get open. A tight end would be easier to get open. So I don't know if Waller has that yet. So it's a clear cut advantage to Kelsey. Well, I tell you, if they, the, uh, Darren Waller, if he, if the coach would use him like we did, Adams would be the guy to clear everybody out and Waller would be the drop down. Underneath, Waller would yeah. lead the team. You know, that's, that's, that's if they, really why if they Travis double him, had all of his stuff is because of heel. Yeah, if they double him, you got Hunter Renfro right there in the slot. The thing I really enjoyed about watching the game, besides the utter domination that we had, uh, was the size of our catch our receivers. We have some big, tall, strong receivers. Yeah, I, the, yeah that catch radius is just sick. And, and I want to talk about Valdez Scandling and Devontae Adams real quick. Um, there's a reason why the Packers went down in flames Sunday. Those guys yeah, they, clearly are not ready. And you know what? Aaron Rodgers wanted his money. He wanted his money. He got his money. How's that money doing for you? You're 0-1. And it's about right. to be worse. Yes. You went down to the Vikings. Which, you know, well, the, no the disrespect Vikings to the are going to win that division. The Vikings are going to win that division. I believe you're right. I believe you're right. But 
if the Packers lose a winnable game, there's going to be some dissent in Green Bay. Yeah, I, just because they're playing the Vikings doesn't mean it's a winnable game. No, no. But and I'm it was saying, in Minnesota. It'd be different if they went, walked into Lambeau and, and dropped a bomb on them. Well, let's say they play Detroit and then they go 0-2. I don't know if Detroit's on their schedule, but, you know. I'm just well, yeah, they're in the same team. division, brother. But, well, I mean, coming up next, and that causes them to go 0-2. As a matter of fact, let me look up the schedule. Uh, I was my... just there. Who does Green Bay play, play this week? Actually, I do – no. Green Bay plays Chicago Monday night. Mm, but you know no. what? Nope, that's wrong. They Sunday night. They play Green Bay. Chicago's at Green Bay Sunday night. Now, Chicago, Chicago walk played in good. and beat them. Chicago, yeah, Chicago played good. Chicago walk in and beat them. They went now, granted, step. that was that was a – they were playing in a hurricane, but yeah, still. Yeah, that's true. But you would think that San Francisco would have been better able to uh, play in that, but guess not. Um, while we're here, we're just going to knock off a couple of these games and we're going to start off in the AFC West. We do have the chiefs and chargers on Thursday, and I'm pretty sure that you're going to speak the same language as me. I got the chiefs winning that. Um, I'm not going to give any scores. I just, I just know that it's arrowhead it's Thursday night. I think they can do it. I'd say no question. We're going to win. No question. Uh, I'm with you, the score, though. But I already kind of did earlier. I'm 34-28, 31-24, that type of game. I would be ecstatic for another 44-21 victory. Yeah. Hold on. You think I'm gloating today? <laughs> Let us drop 44 on San Diego or on uh, Los Angeles. Uh, I'd be and happy to we'll only give up did. like two touchdowns. Oh, it's a wrap. I'd be I'm, happy. I'm for gonna you have my paint, my face painted, and everything next week. <laughs> um, the Raiders are at those Cardinals. I'm gonna hesitantly say the Raiders are gonna win this game because it's the home opener, and it's because they have to get the ship turned around. They can't afford to go zero and two. Because I believe they've got they've got the Titans in week three. I'm hesitant because something tells me. And, and this is the best time to play Arizona. Play them now. Not when DeAndre comes back. Play them now while they got problems. Because if you can't beat them now, what hope do you have against other teams down the road? That's why I say that. I say the Raiders are going to win. But Raiders, they must, 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 must stop Connors. Must. Yeah. yeah. If he has any sort of a day, you guys are going to have your hands full. Now, there's a team in the AFC West that I haven't talked about yet. I might as well get to them because they <laughs> are well on their way to becoming the laughing stock of the AFC West. This division that was supposed to be good, the Denver Broncos. Oh, what that happened? game last night. What happened that to game. them? That game last night. Um, it was a very entertaining game. It was. And, and, you know, I shouldn't be talking about people, but I am. Uh, shout out to Kevin Manning, uh, who's previously been on this show. So he knows that I'm going to blast him because Kevin in our fantasy league was tied going into the game uh, with the person he was playing. I forget who he was playing. They had uh, 102 each. And the person he was playing had nobody else left to play. Kevin had Cortland Sutton. You knew could get a point somewhere. That didn't happen. As a matter of fact, after uh, NFL.com adjusted the fantasy league for uh, games played on Sunday, it was 103 to 102, the other guy. Really? Didn't Sutton have a touchdown? No. No. That was, um, uh, that was the other one, Judy. Yeah. So it was 103 to 102. I feel sorry for him. Uh, not that sorry because he's in my division <laughs> in the fantasy league. I did win my fantasy game. You know, for the first time in three years, I actually finished one and zero oh instead of zero oh and one to start the season. Um, I was sweating bullets though because I started off seventy two to two or seventy two to nothing, something like that, and ended up just winning by twelve points. 
Yeah, I uh, I actually won mine too. It's a very high scoring. It was like one thirty eight to one seventeen. At least Something you had like some breathing room in there. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to see if I couldn't find it. Yeah, it was like 138. to seven. But it, it all because this guy happened to be a Seahawks fan, and he had mm-hmm. Penny, he had Metcalf, he had Lockett, he had the Seattle defense. And The still, guy I played got- last night had Metcalf, and Metcalf only gave him one point. Yeah. But you know yeah. what? I had Lockett. Lockett only gave me a few points. So, you know, it it was a, that game was horrible. The, Rus- the game Russell really Wilson was. Wilson looked like Geno Smith, and Geno Smith looked like Russell Wilson. Yeah. Um, I was actually surprised how well Geno played. Mm-hmm. He played, especially in that first half. He was like yeah. 17 of 18. You know, I think he only ended up with like 200 yards passing. But yeah, he, he, he played still, too conservatively in the uh, second half. But yeah, he that first half he was making some very surprising plays. But we all know Geno Smith; he'll come back to earth, and the Seattle will suck. Yeah. Now, but Denver, man, they got to change. Like they've got the Texans coming up. They've got the true. Texans. But before we move on to the game, I want to. I know our time's limited here, so I want to step back real quick to the game last night. If you were Russell Wilson. Mm-hmm. You've been in the league for 10 years. You won a Super Bowl. You've lost a Super Bowl. You have some clout, yes. right? You have some grit. You have some skin in the game. Would you not, like, when they weren't calling a timeout, Would why wouldn't you not just call the timeout yourself? I'll do you one And better. then walk over to the head coach, who is a rookie head coach. Say, hey, take off your headphones. We need to have this conversation, you and me, real quick, without nobody listening. Mm-hmm. You know, I was – Ryan Clark, the ex Steelers, said something really good on ESPN last night. I did not pay Russell Wilson $284 million to kick a 64-yard field goal. That's what I was going to bring up. Worst decision in football. First of all – And kick- he almost made it. But your kicker's not Jason Elam. But if he they had, If they had it. Jason Elam, almost counts for grenades and horseshoes. This is football. Made it. His last name is not Janikowski. It's not like they didn't have a chance of getting it. Oh, everybody's got a chance. It hooked. No, no. If I tried to kick a 64 off field goal, it ain't going to happen. I mean, everybody on on the NFL roster. (laughs) No, not on. (laughs) Look at the the Steelers. Look at the Bengals game. You know? Yeah. Let's look at the Colts and the Houston game where they tied. Technically, I wouldn't have a problem with the Steelers kicker trying it because he's got a history of being able to do it. I don't know what happened there Sunday. And and even the guy for the Bengals, I mean, he was automatic last year. So you kind of got that confidence in him. But you're right. 60 yards is 60 yards. And that's that's a tough one. And I should should be able to get you five yards. Technically, Russell Wilson should be able to fall forward and get five yards in the right line. So, and if you would have called timeout when he was fourth and five at the beginning, there was a minute and some change left. You you'd get that quick five yards because they only had one timeout. So I I called it. You know, there's a minute left. I get my five yards. We down it and then try to field goal. Yeah, because if that was a fifty eight yarder, fifty nine yarder, he'd have made it. I would call a screen to the tight end and bootleg it. I, I'm the gambler. I don't want. I don't want to put my trust in the field goal kicker because anything can happen. Russell Wilson out there on a bootleg with a tight end screen. The defender's only able to get one guy. Who's he going to choose? Russell Wilson can run that five yards, or Russell Wilson can throw a pass over his head to the tight end. That was working in the first half, but they tried that in the second half, and that wasn't working. That's that's when you run it. Take off. Don't be afraid. Take off. But they were corralling him. They had they they were going straight in at, with all four. They weren't letting him out of that pocket last night. So I don't think that that necessarily would have been there at that particular time because people you would have been be right. looking for it. You know what? But again, nobody thought that we would run down the clock in 13 seconds and kick a field goal last year. So anything is possible. 
I agree. But man, I did not pay my quarterback two hundred eighty-four million dollars for us to kick a sixty-four yard field goal. Nope, nope. Uh, there's just sixty anything. I just I'm not even thinking about it. With only a minute and something left, we're not going to get the ball back. We are not. Go for it. Yeah, That's and then we're... I I don't even like the third and long call. Why would you do a screen pass? Just to catch him off balance. I mean, that's the only thing I could think of, and it didn't work. I mean, yeah, uh, it was all Williams that got the nine yards or whatever it was. But anyway, go ahead and pick who you got winning that game because I know our time's limited. I I got Denver winning it because it's the opener in mile high. Okay, yes, Houston, you had fun last year, uh, last week, but uh, you're you're not going to beat the Broncos. They're going to eventually show up. I'm not going to call that game. I'm just going to let you pick it. It'll be barely, but the Broncos will win. Uh, the only losers in the AFC West this weekend is going to be the Chargers. I'll, I'll take that. Okay, so real quick, I want to go out with this because we've been talking football and everything, but I was reading this thing. Um, I forget what restaurant it was. It was Chipotle or something like that. This girl got fired because on her social media, she put, uh, she uh, filmed a customer with the customer's consent of how he got a free burrito hack. He ordered a taco, but he got, you know, how they individually put the sides in a little cup. I got a whole bunch of sides so that he could make a big burrito, but he just paid for the taco. So it's a free burrito hack. Uh, She was fired for that, which I get it. You're not supposed to be filming people, even though she had the person's permission. It went viral, by the way. Um, but whoever, shout out to that customer, man. Just get all the little sides for your taco. That's and pretty just smart. Make a burrito. That's so, pretty smart. Yeah. Uh, now, my question is is Chipotle or whatever the company is, are they really mad at the girl or are they mad because now people, millions of people, are know how to get shit. over? Yeah. Because believe me, next time I go, I'm going to do that. <laughs> I don't like Chipotle, so they're good. <laughs> uh, you don't? Oh, bro. I'm not a Chipotle fan. Like, uh, maybe every now and then, but yeah. I, I get that. All right. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. Uh, today's podcast was pretty much off script, but it's all good. <clears throat> we worked it. We worked it. <clears throat> Big show. Thanks again for coming. Maybe uh, next week we'll uh, get that special guest on. Yes, sir. If not, I'm going to have some backup ready. Sounds good. All right. Have a good week, everybody. Stay positive. Stay blessed. I didn't hear him. I think he said go Raiders, but he's right. Go Raiders. (laughs) As you did the Tamahawk (laughs) shot. Oh, see if I can edit that out. I'm going to edit that out. (laughs) Later. See you.